beginning, there was darkness, and then, bang, giving birth to an endless expanding existence of time, space, and matter. Now, see further than we've ever imagined, beyond the limits of our existence, in a place we call the universe. It promises to deliver technologies that will carry us ever farther and ever faster. But it's fraught with constant and lethal peril. Flying in outer space is like going through a shooting gallery. It will test the limits of human capacity and human ingenuity. If something goes wrong, what do you do? Nothing. You just die. Welcome to the age of space travel. In ways scarcely even imagined, the steady hand of progress is poised to deliver humanity to the heavens. For ages, the mysterious splendor of the universe has enticed us from its remote heights. At last, its mysterious temptations are within reach, and man's destiny can be fulfilled. I don't know if it's written in our genes, but anytime you see something at a distance and it piques your curiosity, the first thing you want to do is get a closer look. So while telescopes get you pretty far in this regard. Those things that are sort of close enough to be within the reach of our space program, why not take the trip? You want us 10, 9, made it start, 5, 4, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis to assemble. Prying free from our home planet's grip ranks among the greatest of human achievements. But no one, since 1972, has ventured beyond the Earth's orbit. Our space program has been stuck for 30 years. We simply just go around the planet Earth. It's just like Columbus exploring the new world for the first time, and then spending the rest of his life simply puttering around the Spanish coastline. What's the problem? There's a dirty little four-letter word, and that is cost. It costs about $10,000 to put a pound of anything into orbit. Imagine John Glenn made out of solid gold. That's what it costs to put John Glenn or you into orbit. It would cost about $20 million for you to take a weekend trip up to the space station. It would cost about a half a billion dollars for you to go to the moon and for you to go to Mars would probably cost tens of billions of dollars. One way to reduce the cost of reaching space would be to find a more efficient way to overcome Earth's gravity. Remember the story of Jack and the Beanstalk? Jack was the little boy who climbed the beanstalk into heaven. Well, imagine a space elevator such that you hit the up button and the elevator takes you into the heavens just like Jack and the Beanstalk. Instead of building from the ground up, the space elevator would be built from the top down. A satellite in geosynchronous orbit would drop a 60,000 mile cable back to Earth, where it would be anchored to the surface. Now we are within striking distance of being able to create fibers that can withstand the tension of traveling at enormous velocities in outer space as the space elevator rotates with the planet Earth. So it never falls because it rotates at the same rate as the planet Earth. The elevator's compartment would simply roll up the cable, shuttling travelers and supplies into orbit, where it would wait for a spacecraft. This system would entirely replace a conventional rocket launch. And that might reduce the cost of space travel by a factor of a thousand. Think about that. Then you begin to realize that perhaps a trip to outer space may be no worse than an airplane ticket. But beyond the limits of Earth's comforting embrace, 
Exotic menaces await every space traveler. Flying in outer space is not like taking a nice ride in the country in a car. It's like going through a shooting gallery. To an unsuspecting voyager, it might seem the universe is taking aim with a firearm. There are particles in space, even dust-sized particles, pebble-sized particles, that are traveling tens of thousands of miles an hour, and, and sometimes even faster. More than half a million of these projectiles, measuring over an inch in diameter, are zipping around our planet right now. They include pieces of glass broken off of solar cells, paint chips from spacecraft, and debris from rocket booster engines. And in deeper space, there's more danger from pebble-sized meteors called micrometeoroids. A small piece of dust can crack glass, it can penetrate metal, it can pulverize plastic. And that does happen in space all the time. But perhaps an even more deadly danger, not at all solid, lies in weight, radiation. The devastating effects of this invisible energy have been witnessed on Earth in the aftermath of the atomic bombs of World War II and the nuclear fallout of Chernobyl. Distressingly, our own life-giving sun spews out streams of poisonous radiation. So realize that we've been protected in this cradle. We've been protected by the atmosphere of the Earth. Magnetic field of the Earth gobbles up most of the flares from the sun to create the aurora borealis. In outer space, you get the aurora borealis coming right at you. There's no ozone layer. There's no magnetic field to protect you. It's just you and the harshness of outer space. home planet's distance from the sun, roughly 90 million miles away, several hundred million solar particles pass through each square inch of space every second around our Earth. There's high energy particles streaming from the sun all the time. But every now and then, there's an extra dose of these particles. The sun burps up high energy radiation. That's bad, too. That level of radiation is never good for one's DNA. Sunspots flare up these extra doses of energy, like a battery of cannons bombarding the cosmos. There's no way to know that they're going to be here before they arrive. Unfortunately, there's still a risk of radiation even as we get farther from the sun. That's because another invading energy lurks. Known as galactic cosmic rays, they hail from the distant alien worlds of exploding stars and black holes. Galactic cosmic rays are particles that are traveling at, at speeds very close to the speed of light. Uh, even a single particle of iron slamming into your body can have the effect of a major league baseball at 100 miles an hour. They can be devastating. Although heavy iron particles are rare, outside of the protection of a spacecraft, such as when an astronaut performs a spacewalk, thousands of galactic cosmic rays do penetrate the body every second.